just really brings me back to like, I really felt like that. Mm-hmm. And culturally, the school thing, having to move, that was all against us in witchcraft. So like you said, it kind of all came at different times with different women, but it started with um, one girl who he'd actually met in San Francisco. And when I found out about it, I found out with everyone else on TikTok. And yeah, just randomly, I want to say it was like early in the afternoon and just my phone started going crazy. Everyone sending it to me. Did you see this? And so, you know, I watched it a few times. She had some pictures and messages on there. He actually lived in Austin for a while. Okay. And so I had come back from Austin and he was just like sending me pictures. He went on the lake with his brother, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, I wish we would have had time to do that, whatever. Fast forward, she posts the same pictures he had sent me. We just went to Austin. He stayed. Then you're going to turn around and fly another girl out. Um, and it, it ended up not happening. And that was kind of his saving grace for not me forgiving him for this first thing that came out. I didn't like forgive him for it, but I was like, okay, it was just a hinge date. You know, he didn't have much to, not much came of it. The girl never went to Austin. So it was a lot of hurtful words. Yeah. And it was hard to see, like he was entertaining someone with like the same exact information he was giving to me. And I'm someone he's known for a long time. We're like, because we're so good at we were so good at communicating because we've been long distance for a while now like there's never a time he's not going to answer the phone for me especially when uh, his whole family was sending this to him too right so i think he didn't answer me back for like an hour or two okay but every time it something would go kind of it was always this he would always kind of go dark for a little bit to get his thoughts together And this was kind of the start when I started putting the pieces together from every other time he's acted similarly. He was like, yeah, it's true. I met this girl on Hinge. We met one time. It wasn't a date. And I'm sure this is the part we were kind of talking about this for. That's like people are going to think and say like, girl, like you should have known. You should, you know. And yeah, I should have known, you know. But everyone goes through this where, you know. We had never had. And it's not that this was a, a thing in our relationship. I'd never really had a feeling there were little things along the way that I kind of pushed down but it's not like I had girls DMing me all the time oh I was with your man like do everything together we already were like making plans to move to LA together like so it's you know I'm like he wouldn't be doing all of this if he wasn't into it also I was telling myself okay these messages were from March By this time, it's almost Thanksgiving. It's a few days before Thanksgiving. I'm like, okay, you know, our relationship had honestly progressed so much since. I know, but again, see, I still tell myself things. But we were in a far different place by the time it was November. It never happened before. So I'm like, okay, this was in March. Now it's the end of November. You know, I'm going to ride for you. And that was the conversation that those first three days until the next one dropped so the second one was far worse um i think the second one kind of how you touched on like the clout thing i don't i mean of course it was a little but she was under the guise like she felt like since the first girl did it like she felt more inclined Mm -hmm. you know to come out with her truth which god bless this was a girl he had had a quite a long past with So she he was able to use that to his advantage because Mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff she put in there was from like 2018, 2019. Right. And um, so I'm like, okay, you know, that had nothing to do with me right after filming. Like I said, we were not a thing. And immediately within maybe maybe a week tops, he went to Europe right after we wrapped right after our wedding. He went to Europe. And I knew we were still cool. Like we still talked every day, but not on a relationship. And this is this is mid July 2021. So this is way before. This is the this was really the hurtful part of this part of it was he invites me to Europe with them. He's like, come, please. And I'm like, you know, we've been filming so much. I need to get back to work. Like I just have to go to work. So I don't go to Europe. Come to find out he took her. 
I think he just invited me just to invite me, but he knew I wasn't going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause literally he, he invited me and the trip was like three days later. Like who can, I, I can't do that. Isn't it funny that he was always like, I love Raven cause she's so smart. <laughs> I'm like, cause you're smarter than me. <laughs> The part that hurt me was that he told me stories about it, right? He, that you invited me and that you told me it was a group trip, blah, blah, blah. Come to find out after Europe, they extended their trip, stayed together in London. Um, I don't think we FaceTime, we FaceTimed while he was there. But yeah, we like we were texting. Again, this is why we weren't together. To me, it was hurtful. It's like by that time, we were already like so. And even though we hadn't, we didn't get married. We weren't together. Like we were so close. You can tell me the truth. He could tell me anything. Like we would, we told each other everything. So just tell me like, Hey, you know, my ex is about to come on this trip and I'll say, okay, like, you know, thanks for, I would literally say thanks for letting me know instead of a, over a year later, like learning about it on TikTok and that TikTok put a lot of their text messages that were a lot more recent. They had basically still been in communication this whole time. I'm trying to show you like I'm really ready to do it right outside of love is blind and then literally the next weekend went to Cabo with her told me he was in school the whole time I was like texting him we were talking like normal and he was really in Mexico with her and he kept saying nothing nothing you have nothing to worry about you have nothing to worry about and I said what are you talking about he was like I told you I was at school it was in May but I wasn't at school. I was in Cabo with her on a couple's trip. And my heart just sank. And I made him tell me when. It was literally a week after we had come back from New Orleans. That point was like the first time when I started using the words like, we're about to be done. Like, you're pushing it way past my limit because this is a bold face lie. And you knew we were together at that point. You can't. You can't argue it. At this point in May, we we had gone back and forth to see each other to see each other every like every month. Like we were together. And it's funny because when we were on that trip in June, he told me, Oh, I've never been to Mexico before. Like having the best time. And I had no clue. I had no clue. Like literally the month before he was there with her. Um, so that was really, really hard. Like that was the first, I remember that was the first night I was like, okay, like, look, I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm done with you. And this was, this was before the video had dropped with the Cabo stuff. And I'm like, you better just pray she doesn't post this. Like, because that's going to kill me even more. And we're definitely going to be done. (laughs) When you trust someone and you're, what you guys saw on TV was the person that I felt I was with. Right. Someone who's so intelligent and kind and attentive to me and my best friend and in love. Like you keep, like you were saying earlier, you keep telling yourself, well, that's the person that I'm with. And at this point, there was so much evidence that before the Cabo thing dropped, there was so much evidence that this was a lot of old stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he had lied about the old stuff. He hadn't told the whole truth, but there wasn't a lot of actions yet, you know, until more of those actions started coming out. That's when I was like, okay, it's the real deal, but I'm not giving myself excuses, but I think a lot of women go through this. What this has taught me is that you've got to listen to your gut feeling. So if you, you know, if you're suspecting something, it's probably because something's there. I was still begging just be honest just tell me and he still wouldn't and I'm like why did I put myself through that because the first two days you should have just already known and if he wasn't willing to just completely just come clean like clearly he's not willing to be honest with himself or you so that's kind of where I was you know I kept just waiting for him to do the right thing yeah he really was just worried about saving his career in his face you know and he wanted to get lawyers involved to like make people take these claims away so it wouldn't look bad for him. And basically he was like, this is for my career. That's literally what he said the entire time. This is for my career. Like, I want to help you. I, you know, I love you, but what do you want me to do? And basically 
was for me to say that like we weren't dating the whole time. That was like just the most horrible thing for my life because I felt like you are so insistent upon saving yourself that you want to just make me disappear. His whole thing was like, everyone loves you. You're everyone's favorite. And now everyone hates me. Can you please just say it wasn't true? So it'll, it'll save me a little bit. Like, I mean, that's what was being pushed into my head like every single day. So all of this is happening when we already have a lease together and we're already engaged again. I'm like, why would he get engaged to me again and do all of this because of school? But you know what he told me? He said, I didn't go because, because I realized it was wrong. I'm like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. That's interesting. I said, well, why didn't you invite me? He said, well, it wasn't a trip you take your girl on. Yes, the couple's trip was in, was in May. May. We weren't engaged in May, but we were engaged yeah. in August. I mean, what made me so sick about that is literally the weekend before, him and I had had like the most intimate trip to my hometown, took, yeah, took all of our couple's pictures, right? Like, haha. The next weekend, he goes and takes couple's pictures with this. I mean, to be honest, I thought this whole, I was really looking forward to this whole post-show thing. Like, I wanted to do that with SK. Like, I wanted to go into this new part of our lives together. I was looking for, like, we had already started looking at properties in LA. Okay, the night before he tells me about Cabo, right? Then it's like the next day in the afternoon, almost about 24 hours later, we're standing in the kitchen. And I'm like, show me your phone. This was the first time I said, show me the phone right now. Have you been talking to her while we've been going through this? And he's like, no, no, I haven't been talking. I said, okay, show me the phone. He shows me the phone. And that's when I find out about Miami. He had still never told me about Miami. I start scrolling through the messages and I see it. And I said, September, we were already engaged by this point. He's, I didn't go. I didn't go. I said, I don't care. I said, first of all, we're done here. And if she puts this on the internet, it will literally break my heart. Like, because I can't go through anything else. Like, we're done. You need to leave the house. Like, I'm over it. And he's like, oh, you know, whatever. I get really upset again because this is this was like the hardest part for me. Literally, as soon as I said it, she posts the second video with all of the Cabo, with all of the Miami. And I like lost it. October 9th, he texted her happy birthday. Ten days before the show came out, we're going to just wait and see when he leaves. But we thought you knew and we thought you guys were breaking up because he was so insistent. He didn't want the engagement to be aired. And I, I had no idea. At this point, it was like, it was like over a month after the engagement. had. I had no idea he did that. That clip that when I talked to y'all was in November. I still had no idea he went to produce. I had no idea he went to producers till Thanksgiving. But he went to producers in October when we were here filming a reunion. We we're filming reunion. And he went off the grid, remember? No one could find him, couldn't get a hold of him. Everyone was freaking out. Come to find out, he locked himself in a van with one of the producers and was like, you got to take the engagement out. You got to take the engagement out. Um, I had no idea until the producer called me after all this, after y'all's clip, after everything came out, called me and she was like, I thought you knew he asked to take the engagement out. And I, how would I know that? They said they could not figure out what was wrong with him. My inkling is that the girl was already in his ear saying she was sure. going to say yeah. something. That's, that's, I've never, I, I brought it up to him once, but I didn't push it because I could tell he was lying. He wasn't going to tell me the truth. And by this point, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was like the level of manipulation. Like you literally did all of that on camera, got reengaged. It was for real. And then a month later, without even telling me or talking to me about it, you go back and you're like, please don't air it. Don't air it. I thought we were engaged. <laughs> yeah, she literally called me and was like, I thought y'all had broken up. I thought you knew. And now looking back, I realized you had no idea. Like, I really care about his mom. Everything y'all saw between her and I was like, so for real. Mm -hmm. Like, she is amazing.